Greetings, YouTube. It's my Kaylee Seven. As you can see, I'm on the Goldwing today. And this bike is utterly filthy. It is really a disgrace how dirty this bike is. So, I need to clean it. And that's what I intend to do. My camera setting today is Superview uh, Moto on my GoPro. Moto GoPro. And I believe it's either 2K or 4K. 30 frames per second, I guess. Uh-oh. I'm not sure how good or not good the quality of the video will be, given the fact that, you know, the bike's filthy. You can smell the dirt. This is the first time I've ridden this bike since the 18th of May. <laughs> Shameful, I know. I didn't ride at all for about two weeks. And then when I did ride, it was only a couple, three times maybe, and that was all three were on the Kawasaki. In part because this bike is so filthy and I didn't want to deal with it. And so now today I'm dealing with it. <laughs> is there some reason we're doing 30 and a 45? Does anybody know what the speed limit is here? Hello? So a little bit of news for you, uh, coming up next month, I will be very possibly heading up to Boston uh, because my mother is very ill, although she's, she's still living at, in her little castle, as she calls it. So she's independent living, but she has people coming three times a day to help her out with cooking and cleaning and such. She has uh, pulmonary fibrosis and uh, it's getting worse every day. <laughs> she has to be on increasing levels of oxygen all the time. And it's horrible. She can barely move a muscle without getting completely exhausted. And this comes as a result of a couple of bouts with pneumonia that she had about four years ago. One of which was in Ireland with me and my sister. And I think that caused so much damage to her lungs that now she is basically dying from the damage that that caused. So uh, I figure, you know what? I gotta get up there to see her. She hasn't called for me or anything, but I need to get up there. So you'll be seeing little snippet videos of me up in Boston, none of them on the bike. I'll just do little bits here and there, maybe at, at the beach or something. I'm not taking the bike. You know, I gotta say, skewing between topics, that uh, the bike is handling wonderfully. Having not been ridden in three weeks, 
almost, I'm 10 days away from a month, right? So, you would think that the bike would run rough or something, you know, but no, no, the bike's fine. It just keeps on ticking, like a Timex. Effortless is all hell. Golly. People often ask me, do you miss shifting? No, not at all. If this thing had a shifter on it, you know, like a you know heel toe or toe shifter and, and a clutch lever to pull in, I would almost never use it. The only time I would use it would be in tight U-turn type situations. So you could feather the clutch. And I know everyone's going to say, well, I put it in rain mode, or I put it in econ mode, or I do this, and I do that. I know there's all kinds of methods, and I'm, I'm pretty decent with it. I can do a U-turn, no problem, for the most part. But uh, if I had a clutch lever and a, and a toe shifter, I would only use it for that purpose, I think, because the bike just shifts so marvel marvelously on its own. It downshifts exactly the way you would expect uh, to downshift, if not better. It upshifts uh, way better than I ever could. Somebody once watched a video of mine and said, you're shifting too early. I said, I'm not shifting at all. This is an automatic. You're gonna fault the, the bike's computer? Oh, that bike needs to learn how to how to shift itself. <laughs> oh goodness, the armchair experts. You're you're in seventh gear and you're only doing 46 miles an hour. That's that's far too low of a speed to be doing the seventh sixth gear. Well, you know what? Complain to Honda. Bike's going strong after all this time. I have 18,898 miles on the bike, and uh, I've never had a problem with the bike. The only problems I've had are two. One was continual flat tires, not the bike's fault. And two, when I strapped the bike down to the flatbed truck in 2019 to go 170 miles from Bethune, Colorado back to Denver. I did not strap the bike down correctly. I used the handlebars, and you're not supposed to do that. And so that caused some looseness in the steering head bearing, I guess it's called. They fixed it, no problem. No, no cost to me. And the bike's been fine ever since. Another uh, expert was watching my uh, my videos from the triple nickel and was complaining about, oh, you're not covering your brake with the two fingers at all times. And you watch, you know, one video and you know everything about me. So uh, I made mention of the fact that if somebody's going to deign to teach others then a per that person should be more polite about how to do it you know if you're going to be a teacher don't be a dick you say something nice like i you know you're doing a great job out there and uh, you know i've been riding for a while too and I, I learned all these pointers so if you're interested let me know and and I'll tell you what I have and see if that might help you, you know, because I know you're always wanting to improve and maybe I can contribute. So let me know. That kind of thing is what you say. You don't say, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. Do you even know what this is? That's a dick thing to say. All right, let's do this. Let's wash the bike. Look how dirty. Look at how dirty that is. My God. That's from various... <laughs> off-road misadventures that I had with Moose 3971. Oh, this thing was on the whole time. <laughs> oh, my God. 
I'm an idiot. Hadn't looked at that side of the bike. I think we're good. That is not mine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Dirty, dirty, dirty bike. All right, let's uh, fix this and I'll do a little magic trick, ready? Ta-da! There you go. Clean-er, clean-ish. I used all the little settings on the thingamajig. The clear coat, the tire cleaner, the pre-soak, the wash soap, the foam brush, the rinse, the tri-color, the spot-free rinse, the air gun. Needs detailing, but all the dirt's off of it. And that's the primary reason here. So, hey, look at me getting on from the left side of the bike. Oops, slippery. All right, let's get this party started. Eighteen thousand eight hundred ninety-eight miles, and away we go. Uh, I wonder what the temperature is this morning. 74 degrees and humid because it feels hotter. As you can tell by the wind noise, my windshield is down. Uh, Shelby. Kind of like a Shelby, not. Uh, My first Barker wave in like a month. Yeah, not half bad out here today. It's supposed to be thunderstormy later. So uh, maybe the bike will get wet. Maybe I'll cover it. I don't know. Hopefully there won't be any hail. I'll keep an eye on the weather. enjoyed my series, the uh, Mike Cayley Sevens story. I've got one for you as I go to work here today. A little anecdote of sorts from my uh, my past. My my father was uh, he was very uh, protective of his family, and so. If anybody hurt any one of us, that person risked death. And not, not just metaphorically, but physical death. And so there's uh, one time I was walking out to my car at my high school. I had a piece of crap 1980 Buick Skylark coupe, yellow and brown. My father called it the uh, pudding pop car. He gave it to me, saying that he, you know, was helping me out, but actually a piece of junk. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm going out to the car. And a couple days earlier, I had called my ex-girlfriend, who was now living in Florida, and asked her why she had charged a long-distance call to my mother's number. And she told me that there was a reason or whatever. And so she said she would pay us back, and she did. She sent a check. And uh, that was it. Well, two days later, I'm going to my car, and I put the key in the, in the door, and all of a sudden, these hands came out of nowhere, grabbed me, lifted me up off my feet, threw me up against my car, and there was this seven-foot-tall maniac. Looked like Joe Elliott from Def Leppard, only seven feet tall and insane. 
and he was screaming and yelling something about me messing with his girlfriend and he's going to kill me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm staring him right in the eye. And uh, I, said, I don't know what you're talking about. And then he says the name. I'm like, I, I wasn't, what? No. And I was trying to explain it, but he wouldn't listen. So he lets me down and he gives me a big shove and uh, throws me like three feet. And I'm, I'm still on my feet. My right leg said run. My left leg said, my left leg said stay. And I'm just kind of standing there stunned and frozen and he's pointing at me and saying he's gonna kill me if, if I ever talk to his girlfriend again or see him again or whatever so he goes walking off through the field and I get in my car and I turn it on and for just a second I thought if I put this car in drive right now I can chase him around in this grass and have a great old time maybe even hit him and I win and then I thought no I don't win because I go to jail and no college career and no nothing and so I just Put it in reverse and slowly backed out and went home. Called my dad, told him what happened, because I, you know, I didn't know if this guy was going to kill me the next day. I happened to know where the guy lived because he's so huge. You kind of notice when you see him around town, and I saw him going into this house a lot. So my plan uh, was to go there and talk to him, but my father's like, "Here's what we do: uh, stay home from school tomorrow, and the next day when I'm off work, I'll hide in the bushes." And when he comes to mess with you, I'll jump out and I'll kick his ass. Like, no, no, I don't want you to do that, Dad. Uh, I want to go to his house with you as my, you know, security. And I want to talk rationally with him. And so he didn't like the idea, but he agreed. We got there. And uh, the mother was like three feet tall. Father was like three feet tall. We're in the living room talking to them. And all of a sudden he walks in from the kitchen and he points this, this telephone pole length arm across the living room at my at me and my father saying you uh, how dare you come to my house this that and the other and my father's looking at me like what the hell did you get us into and I'm looking at him like I told you I didn't want you to jump out of the bushes and kick his ass and so uh it looks like it's going to get really bad like it's going to go to the fisticuffs murder death kill and uh, all of a sudden we hear this scream that shouted down everybody my father his father, him, shouted everybody down. I wasn't really yelling. I was just standing there waiting to die. And uh, it's the mother. She screamed, shut up! And they all, the whole room went silent. She clearly was the dominant one. And she turns to me and she says, I am so sorry, Michael, for what my son did to you. And I promise you, because I explained what had happened, and I promise you that he will never do that to you again. And she looked up at him really quick and she said, will you? And he sheepishly is looking down at the floor. No, I won't do anything again. And she thanked me for coming, apologized again, made him apologize. And uh, off I went. We get outside the house. My father started laughing almost uncontrollably saying, wow. Okay, we know who wears the pants in that family. <laughs> Oh my God. So right there is when I started to, to, to be more reasonable. Uh, you know, I was separating uh, my, my modus operandi, is that what they call it, modus operandi. I separated it from, you know, the other people in my town who might be more uh, apt to uh, do violent things, you know. I decided that I was going to be different, and I was. I handled it differently. I handled it like a responsible, mature adult, and uh, I was glad I was able to do it that way. So there you go, a little story from Mike Haley 7 about, uh, oh, there's my walk reverse. They call it reverse gear, but it's really walk backwards. Here we go, walking it backwards. And now I'm going to walk it forward. See over there? Walk it forward. So I don't have to use my muscles at all. <laughs> I don't need muscles at all for this. And it's slightly downhill. I don't have to worry because it'll walk right back out. Anyway, it's my Kaylee 7. Talk to you later.